Nantou is a symbol and witness of Shenzhen's history. Its jurisdiction mainly involves the southeast of Guangdong Province, including Hong Kong and Macau today, reaching as far as Yunxiao in Fujian Province. As we all know, Shenzhen is a coastal city far away from the central government. So, in the past, when transportation was relatively underdeveloped, how it was governed? Let's dive into the story of the old town. From the Han Dynasty to the Tang Dynasty, sea salt production had been the main economic linkage connecting the central government and the desolate land. At the start of the Han Dynasty, there was a conflict about whether the salt industry was monopolized by the state or privately owned. In other words, it was viewed as a struggle against governmental power, because the stronger the state control over the salt industry, the stronger the Nantou ancient city was being governed. Finally, the Emperor Wu of Han Dynasty won the conflict and established the salt monopoly system to the national wide. To further ensure the implementation of this policy, salt officers were designated in Pan Yu County since the Han Dynasty, and dedicated department was then set up to manage salt production and sales. As a result, salt contributed a lot of tax revenue to the central government, meaning that the central government has successfully strengthened its control over the Nantou's jurisdiction. Despite the passage of time and the change of dynasties, the duties of salt officials was remained. Further, it still took the key roles of linking the central government and the Pan Yu County. During the Three Kingdoms period, in the first year of Ganlu, which is 265, a salt commissioner was appointed, and the salt commissioner headquarter was built. Similar history reoccurred in Jing Dynasty in which the title of salt commissioner was kept. Unfortunately, the central government deprived Nantou of its position as a county's capital, which largely decreased the governmental control. Simultaneously, the situation of illegal salt trade was worsened. The economic linkage now seems to be fragile. Following this trend, the salt production in Nantou was declined dramatically in the Sui Dynasty. However, the reason may have less to do with Nanto itself, but more to do with the composition of salt industry in the Sui Dynasty. Totally, there were four types of salt in the Sui Dynasty. The first one is what is extracted from sand, which was the main way of producing salt in Nanto. The second type is extracted from salt lakes. The third type of salt is produced from saline alkali soil, and the last one was obtained from rocks in the west of China. Among all four different types of salt, only the salt extracted from salt lakes and the saline alkali ground were being controlled and taxed by the government. Up to some point, it may be safe to conclude that sea salt, just like what produced in Nantou, was of little significance in quantity produced to the empire as a whole. This further decreased the economic linkage between the central government and Nantou's jurisdiction. In the Tang Dynasty, the production of sea salt experienced a considerable growth, mainly due to the surge of population. However, this could be only seen as a slight recovery of the salt industry, and instead, it could not prevent Nantou from eventually losing its economic linkage with the central government. Up until this time, Nanto's function as a salt-produced city has mainly come to its end. And with the emerging requirement for a national defense system, Nanto would then become a military center as a second stage of its history, which also will be discussed in our video in the next section. So, if you are still interested in the topic, please subscribe our channel to see the next section of the video. And definitely, come and visit the Nanto Ancient City Museum in person someday. Thanks for watching.